since the third grade, second grade, like what do you want to be when you grow up? Shortstop for the Yankees. You dream of it, but it was never something you work for. Like I worked for the 12 USA team, the 15 USA team, the 18 USA team to win a state championship. I felt like I could control those goals and then everything else played out after that when it became kind of like an actual opportunity. It just kind of hit me and I just wanted to run with it. This kid, born in Manhattan, actually moved to New Jersey, long line of Yankees fans. I was from pretty much birth. I think it all really stems from my grandfather, his dad, so my great-great-grandfather. He went and fought in the war when he was a baby, and when he came back, the way they like bonded and he got to like know his dad was he would sit on his lap every night and they listened to the Yankees. Swung on, there she goes! Mickey Mantle is hitting the 500th home run. For my dad growing up and then for me growing up, there's, like I said, there's no choice. It's just all I've ever loved and wanted to do. My core memories is just being outside, growing up in the city and being able to just experience that. Go to the, go to the park after school. And it'd start me and my dad and then within five, ten minutes, we'd have a full like nine on nine game with the neighborhood kids. So I guess that's kind of encapsulated a lot of the memories of my childhood. USA! USA! It was incredible. I mean, I still think about that and still talk to the guys that were on that team. And I mean, we were 12 years old, and the gold medal game against Taipei, we were playing in front of over 20,000 people. And um, I think having the perspective of like when we, when I was that age and we were that young, like nothing mattered. Going like obviously across the world, and having like you walk into the food room, all the teams are there, and like. You're wearing the USA across your shirts. It's the same thing as wearing the Yankee logo wherever you go. So to have that at a young age definitely helped a lot. You know, it really stood out to us with Team USA, where he was on a really good team. They were winning games, and he was in the middle of everything. And then you go back to his summer ball team with the Canes, Thinnett, Del Barton. He was just always part of winning. Yeah, my dad worked in the area and he'd always heard of Del Barton and you know, patients or whatever that say you got to send your kid to Del Barton, Del Barton, Del Barton. So I didn't know anything about anything. I guess it kind of got stuck in my head and we visited and I kind of fell in love with the school, fell in love with Coach Chattel and everyone there. So I only applied to one school. If I didn't get in, I didn't know what I was going to do. But um, I'm definitely super grateful and lucky to have uh, become part of that community, part of that family. It wasn't really until really the end of my senior year where everything kind of started to pick up and we really had to have like family discussions and really weigh it all out. Well, we started scouting him pretty young. I'd say 10th grade, he, he came onto our radar. That senior year, uh, we got to see him play quite a bit. He was on the same team with Jack Leiter and so it was a, a guy that we were able to scout and you know, that's when it really hit to us of what kind of player we, we really thought we were going to be able to possibly draft. I definitely had an incredible opportunity and situation being committed to Vanderbilt and I was 100% full-fledged all in. It was the hardest phone call I've ever had to make ever and I think that speaks to everything they have going on there and it was amazing to be able to watch and live through the guys and follow them and root for them even to this day. I think when it came down to it, it was such a win-win that any way the draft happened or whichever way it went, I knew I was gonna go to bed, sleep soundly and be good with the decision. With the 30th selection of the 2019 MLB draft, the New York Yankees select Anthony I was really happy to be able to spend it with the friends and the teammates, but also obviously my family all got to come over and then it wouldn't have been right if we didn't really get to experience it all together. There you go, and a high drive to deep left, gone and the ball game's over. And you know the world is going to be saying move him up, but he's a joy to watch here in the Hudson Valley. Hope he drives it in the air, deep towards left field. It's a walk-off two-run bomb for Yankees top prospect Anthony Volpe. Line drive, Volpe snagged it. 
slides to a stop, throws to first in time, and it's gone. First triple-A home run for Anthony Volpe by the 21-year-old future star of the Yankees. Good numbers for Volpe so far this spring. He is in that shortstop competition. First pitch swing for Anthony Volpe. Center field, Rodriguez tracking. That ball is gone. Anthony Volpe, a two-run home run, gets the Yanks on the board. Abrams up the middle, Volpe pops up in a strong pile. Wow. Anthony Volpe, they think uh, this guy is as good a prospect as they've had since Derek Jeter. The fan base is just salivating to get this yeah. guy uh, on the roster for opening day. Volpe has stole this show. There's a legitimate chance Anthony Volpe can make this team. It was the second last day of spring training. My like heart was like in my like feet. Like so I'm just sitting at my locker, I'm like texting my mom, like, hey, like they're gonna start telling us whatever. And I'm sitting there, like people are getting called in, and I just I was like, I went into the weight room, I was like, I can't just be in, I can't be in here for this. And then it ended up being like over half an hour later, they finally come get me, like, they're like, where were where were you at? And then so then that's when I finally went into the office and then they took it from there. All right. It's a difficult conversation to have to have because you came in and did play your ass off, okay? And, you know, we talked about at the start of this being a competition and, and you killed it. But at the end of the day, you got 20-something games at AAA. There's always room for development. But at the end, I think that development should happen in the big leagues. Welcome to New York. <laughs> Congratulations, brother. I had my family there waiting in the, in the dugout, which was incredible. So to be able to experience that and then be able to go right to telling them um, was amazing. Yeah. All right.